So last time, we finished up talking about remove min and remove max. And one of the things that I was emphasizing was how, well, first of all, remove the remove min stuff, along with finding the minimum value, I did recursively. But the maximum related stuff I did iteratively for no other reason than just showing you the difference. So there's that. But one thing that we were talking about at the end was how it was kind of obvious. To me, it's a little obvious when you compare the iterative, especially the, the else part, that iterative part there with the recursive part. How we have parent and current, and we're just iterating down each right child. As if there was no left child. We're just going down the right, but this is doing it with a while loop, where the other one did it recursively by just changing what the arguments were to the next function call, the recursive function call. But if we can see the similarity in that the code's different, but the algorithm is the same. So when talking about the remove min, remove max, one thing we were aware of was, OK, if we're removing the min or the max, and it's a, a leaf node, it's easy peasy. There's nothing special that we have to do. You just remove it. You don't need to, there's no left or right subtree to manage. But it's possible with a remove min or remove max that it's an internal node. Now, whenever we're removing the min or max, it's never possible. Think about what I'm going to say. I'm going to ask you why this is true. It's never possible for the element you want to remove to have both a left and right child. Why? Because you're going down as far as you can to one side. Exactly. If it's the maximum or the minimum, there is no left or right child <coughs> accordingly. So there can only ever be one child if it exists. And then we saw there was that special case of the root, which really wasn't a special case because it's still just an internal node. But the trick there was, OK, if you're removing an element that has a child node, and I don't care if it's the left or the right one, you just basically re you replace the, the node you're removing with the child node. And then everything's fine. Because if I have a situation where I'm removing this node, it's a maximum, let's say, and I don't care what I have up here. I really don't even care what I've got going on down here. I'm in this kind of a situation where this is the node I want. Here's current. And here's parent. This is the situation I'm removing maxima. All I have to do is replace the current with the current's left child. And if it was removing the minimum, it would be the right child. That's all I have to do. And the reason it's safe is, look, if, it's all, if we give it a binary search tree, it's a binary search tree, and I want to remove this element here. I know this whole subtree here is also a binary search tree. Because if it wasn't, then the whole thing wouldn't be a binary search tree. So this must be a binary search tree that's balanced, or not balanced, uh, set up accordingly. This node, everything to the right of it must be bigger than this. Meaning everything in this subtree, its right left child, everything in that subtree must also be bigger than this. It's not possible for anything over here to exist because it's the maximum. And if anything over here existed, then this wouldn't be the maximum. So all I do is just make the parent have its right child be equal to current's left child, which is also the parent's right child's left child. That's the trick. And that's why it's safe, is because it itself is a binary search tree. It must be bigger than whatever is in parent, or equal to, I guess, if we allow duplicates. So if we just kind of promote it up here, everything's fine. It's all safe. It preserves the binary search tree property, and we eliminated that element. So it's all good. And we also saw how 
even if, like imagine this node here, the parents writes left child, so the node I want to remove is left child. It could be null. But if it is null, the algorithm is the same. Because if I replace the parent's right child with the current's left child, which is null, well, then this gets replaced with its right child being nothing, which is correct because it, we've, effect, we've just removed a leaf node if its left child doesn't exist. So it actually, it works out just nicely. It's really nice. It's great. Any questions about those removes? Now, if we're moving on to the general remove, things are going to get hairy. Because then we talked about this in the last topic, right? We said, OK, look, we could be removing a leaf node. We could be removing an internal node. And you know, like, what happens if I'm removing a node that's an internal node? What happens if it has two children? There's a whole lot of things that could happen. There's a lot of funny little cases that we talked about. Not actually, not a lot. There's only a few. But there are those funny cases that we need to address. So let's have a look. So first of all, I've got this public remove, and I've got a private remove. So it's doing the recursive thing again. But let's look at the public one. So I want to remove some arbitrary element. element. Well, if it's empty, throw an exception. You can't remove something from an empty collection. Right? So whatever. It's an empty tree. Can't remove it. I do that whole comparison thing on line 48, it looks like. I don't need to save that into an, a variable. I could just make this call every place I want to use comparison, like here, for example, or here. But to make the code a little simpler, I just save the result. And the result of this comparison is basically telling me, is it less than, equal to, or greater than? Right? The thing I'm looking for. Or the thing I want to add. Or I think I want to remove, pardon me. So if comparison is 0, that means the elements are equal. And if the elements are equal, then I want to remove, in this particular example, the root. Because this is the public one, and it's always operating on the root. So if I want to remove the root, what do I do? Well, I get the data from the root. I save it to be returned later. And then I need to find my replacement node. Let's leave it at that for right now. I magically find the replacement node. And I just set that to root. If comparison is greater than, well, I call remove on the left. And if it's less than, I call it on the right. But this is calling the recursive remove, of course. So we need to go look at the private recursive one. Any questions? There. Return element. Is return element even used? No, I'm not sure what I have return element here for because it just returns a Boolean. I'll have a look at that. Okay, there's public remove method similar to public remove min remove max. It checks if the root, otherwise, it checks which subtree to continue search down and calls recursive private remove. Okay, let's look at the private one. All right, remove. Well, it takes the element I'm looking for, a node parent, and a node current. This is the same idea as the remove min, remove max. We'll, we'll give each method call a reference to the node I'm currently looking at, its parent, and the element that I want to remove, of course. And that's why when we go look at the, the calls up here, root is the parent because, well, the first time we call it, the root will be the parent. Unless, of course, the root is the thing I'm looking for, which is addressed in this particular condition. All right. If current is null, no such element exception. If I ever get down, if I'm looking for an element, Actually, let's ignore that base case for one moment here. Okay, otherwise, okay, ignoring the base case, we do the comparison, 
If comparison is the thing I'm looking for, um, and parents' data compared to is greater than zero, set left, set right of this replacement note thing. Okay, we'll come back to this as well. Otherwise, if it's greater than, we go to the left. If it's less than, we go to the right. This is doing a binary search for the elements we're looking for to remove. The if comparison equals equals zero, that's the part of the condition, that's the part of the function that's going to do the removing and finding a replacement through the find replacement private method that we're about to look at. But the base case of there, the if current is null, and then this go left, go right, this is just a binary search tree. If I am ever, like, okay, I'm going to just start drawing some arbitrary tree. If I'm looking for 15, this is how I have to look for it. I look at 10. Which way do I go? Well, this way, because 15 is greater than 10. Now I'm looking at 19. If 15 exists, it must be here. I'm looking at 14. If 15 exists, it must be here. And there it is. But imagine I was looking for 16. If I was looking for 16, I would go the same way. And if I'm looking at 15, if 16 exists in this tree, it must be to the right of 15. It must be to the right of 10. It's got to be to the left of 19. It's got to be to the right of 14. And it's got to be to the right of 15. And if it's not there, it can't be in the tree at all. Because if it existed, it must have been there. It can't be anywhere else based on how this tree is built. Do you agree with that statement? That's what's going on in the first, in, on that condition up there. If I'm looking for 15 or 16 and current is ever null, that means it must not be there. Okay, great. Now we're, let's look at the, so the else if where comparison is greater than and then the final else. This is just continuing the binary search. This shouldn't be a problem. This is the part that's Perhaps a little funky. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, if comparison is zero, all right, so if, if I'm looking at a node that contains the element I want to remove. So let's say I'm looking at uh, I've just got this tree. I just these numbers are meaningless. I've just thrown them on there to make the tree. Let's say I want to remove 19, all right? So I'm looking at 19. So the if condition line, I think it's line 40, 74, is true. OK, parent. Let's draw, we've got parent and current. Now, of course, this is going to be true for in general. I'm just using this tree for demonstration purposes. So, if parent's data compared to the current's data is greater than zero. So if the parent's data is bigger than the current data, that means I need to set the parent's left. Okay, hold on, now I gotta wrap my head around this. What's going on here? The parent's data Parent, hmm. Give me a moment while I try to wrap my head around the code I wrote months ago that's not commented at all. Okay, so if parent's data compared to the current's get data is greater than zero, meaning the parent's data is bigger. Ah, okay. This is just checking which way I've gone relative to the parent. This is basically asking the question, am I the parent's left or right child? That's what it's asking. That's all that is. Because if the parent's data is 
greater than me, that means I must be over here, right? Because 10 is bigger than 5, so it must be, I must be the parent's left child, right? Otherwise, I'm the right child. And the otherwise is also true because the equals always went to the, to the right. So that if there is just checking which child am I? Am I the left or the right child? If I'm the left child, well, the parent's left is going to be set to whatever the replacement node is. The parent's right is going to be whatever the replacement node is, if we're the right child. So we're using this magical find replacement node. So what's going on there? But before we look at that, do we have any questions about this? I will say, probably, everyone's different, but my guess is this general purpose remove, the public, the private, and this find replacement node method that we haven't looked at yet, are is the most complex thing we're looking at in 162. So I'm going to make sure it's clear that if you're thinking to yourself, man, this seems hairy, yeah, this is the most complex thing we're looking at in this course, okay, that, we'll lect that I'll lecture about. So it is not trivial. You are not expected to understand it like that. If you can, you're weird. Good, but that's weird. These are some, this is something you're going to have to take your time with and maybe draw out a couple times to really wrap your head around it. So let's go over one more time. And we'll start with the public one. Okay. I don't think return element is necessary. In fact, I'm going to go double check the code because I think I can eliminate that and update this right here. But anyways, if the tree is empty, you can't remove anything from it. Done. Easy. We do the comparison. If it's the thing we're looking for, that means I want to remove the root node. If I want to remove the root node, all I'm going to do is magically call this function find replacement node and set that to the root. Presumably, this find replacement node is also updating the replacement, the, the node that's being returned, left and right children accordingly. But that's checking the root condition. If it's greater than, well, it must be to the left. And if it's less than, it must be to the right. And these are the private calls. Here. So here's the private recursive one. If we are ever looking for something to remove, and we ever find a null reference variable, variable like we said here, if I was looking for 16, 16 couldn't be anywhere else in this tree. If it exists, it must be here. And if we ever get to a, if we ever get to that case where it's null, it must, then we conclude it's not there, so we can't remove it. We raise that exception. We throw the exception. Uh, it says empty tree. That shouldn't say empty tree. That should say not there. Geesh, look at all these bugs in my code. So that's a bad message for the exception. It shouldn't say empty tree. It should say element not there. No such, uh, probably no message would be fine, no such element exception. Otherwise, we do the comparison. If we find what we're looking for, we found the node containing the data we want to remove. If we are the left or right child of the parent, replace the parent's left or right child with the proper replacement node that's found with the magic find replacement node method. Otherwise, I continue searching for the thing I want to remove down the left or right subtrees accordingly. Okay? Now, let's look at this find replacement node. There is a lot. This is, a lot of this is comments, but let's look at the, the header for a second. Or the, the doc, the doc. So, uh, which node should be used to replace a node being removed? 
there are a few conditions. Both left and right children are null. Here, simply remove the node. If you're looking at a node that has no children, it's a leaf node. Easy peasy. If left child is not null, but the right child is null, replace the to remove node with the left child. Okay? So if the left child is not null, but the right child is null, you just promote the left child. It's just like the remove min, remove max thing. Left child is null, but right child is not null, replace with the right child. If both left and right children are not null, replace the thing we want to remove with the in order successor, which is the right subtree's leftmost node. When looking at any binary search tree, and as we talked about in the previous topic, you could also use the in order predecessor, but we're going to use in order successor because we always put duplicates to the right which we also, when discussing, it doesn't really matter if we put them to the right, we could still use the, the predecessor, but because duplicates go to the right, if we're removing an element, the element could be re replaced with the same value, which is kind of nice anyways, so. We're just always going with the in-order successor. Why does selecting the in-order successor work? Now, we're not gonna I'm not going to give you a formal proof. If it wasn't obvious, I've been avoiding formal proofs of anything. But we're going to go with getting the intuition. Because the intuition, the formal proofs just are hopefully giving you the intuition anyways. But let's work through the intuition as to why this is going to work. This is a binary search tree. Assume we have a binary search tree, meaning it has the correct properties. Everything over here is less than this greater than this, everything over here is less than this, greater than this, but less than, and so on. Okay, we got a binary search tree. Let's say I'm replacing the root. It doesn't need to be the root, there could be a parent to this, I don't care, but it's the root of some subtree. I need to have this node, if this node is being removed, and it's getting replaced with something, the thing that goes back in here must preserve the fact that everything over here is less than the value that's getting put into here. Wait, did I work? Yeah, everything over here must be less than the value being put into here. And everything over here must be greater than or equal to the value that's being put into here. So we're going to do the in order successor. That would be the, the element that would come immediately after. We're going to talk about why that works and where it's always going to be. I'm replacing this node. Everything over here, everything to the right of this node is bigger than it. Do you agree or equal to? Okay? In any given tree, I don't care if you have access to the root of a whole tree or the root of some subtree in a tree, given any root of any tree subtree, where can I find the smallest element in that tree? Always. Furthest left. Furthest left. Start at the root, go all the way to the left until you can't anymore. It's guaranteed to be the smallest element. And the reason is, well, if it's not the smallest element, given the fact that it's a binary search tree, any smaller element that did exist must be to the left of it. But because there's nothing to the left, it must be the smallest element. Right? So, if I'm looking at this tree, I can find the smallest element in this tree by going all the way to the left. Right? So, this magic node that I eventually get to, let's say is the smallest element in this 
some truth. Everything, we're, we're guaranteed that the value in here must be greater than all the elements over here. Why? To the right of the root. Yeah, because if this is bigger than this, and this is bigger than this, this is bigger than this. Because that's how numbers work. And this must be smaller than everything else, excluding this node from this subtree. This node, if it's the smallest node in this whole subtree, there's no value in this whole tree that's less than this, right? So if I take this value, put it here, I'm guaranteed that that value is bigger than everything in the left subtree, because it must be, because it came from the right subtree. And it's smaller than everything in the right subtree, because, well, we just eliminated it. Sure, there might be a duplicate in there. But if we remove this and put it up here, it must be greater or less than or equal to everything in this subtree, because we found the smallest element in this subtree. This is where I'm seeing some people go, If this is x, no, I don't think that's going to help. This, I, this part, I know you know this part, this being bigger than everything over here makes sense. That part, I know you're good with. This is the smallest element in this whole subtree. Why? Because it's the leftmost node. So we're guaranteed to find the smallest element in this subtree. If I eliminate it, there might be a duplicate in here, but let's assume there isn't for simplicity. If I eliminate it and put it up here, it's less than everything in this tree still. Because it was the smallest thing in this tree, so now it's less than or equal to everything in this tree. There, now I'm seeing it. And if you're really struggling with it, chances are you're looking, you're working too hard. If we do that, the whole binary search tree property is preserved. Everything else was still the binary search tree. Everything over here was left alone. Removing this element, we can remove the minimum pretty easily. Right? Remember, if you remove the min, just replace it with its right subtree if it exists. If it doesn't exist, whatever, you replace it with null. That preserves the binary search tree property. And replacing the node with its in-order successor preserves the binary search tree property across the whole tree. So there's the intuition as to why this is correct. So find replacement node. All right. So let's take our time with this. What time is it? Oh, we're in great shape. Find replacement node, and I have a reference to a node called to remove. So this is the node I want to remove. If to remove's left is null, and its right's null, it's a leaf node. And if that's the case, replacement node is null. It's nothing. If I'm removing a leaf node, then I'm being replaced with nothing. Right? If two removes left is not null, but its right is null, just replace yourself with your left subtree. If your left is null, but your right isn't, just replace yourself with your right subtree. That would be the case of like, if I'm eliminating 14, its left subtree doesn't exist, but its right subtree does. And this tree might have, who cares how many things? Just do that, right? And everything's fine. It's the case where the left and right aren't null, where they both exist, where we could have the issue. So that's the else condition. I start with parent, starts at to remove, and current is to removes, get right. All right? 
So I'm I want to remove 19. I'm going to use a different color now so I can find it. I'm leaving this as P and C because it was the parent and current from the recursive remove. But now I'm going to start this at parent because this is now the find replacement nodes methods parent. So I have a parent reference variable references to remove and current references to removes get right. So let's all agree if I replace the 19 with the 20 that's what we want to do and we're all happy if that's ha what's going to happen because this is the leftmost node in this subtree. Current. That's where we're starting. Okay. I say, while current's left is not null, parent equals current, current equals current dot get left. This is just iterating down the left subtree. This, if you look at the recursive find max, or sorry, the, the iterative find max, you're going to see this loop, except instead of going to the left, we're going to the right. That's what this is, except it's not recursive, or sorry, it's, it's an iterative, but going to the left. So this is iteratively going all the way down until we find this tree's leftmost node. And that's what the comment there is, uh, find the in-order successor. Okay, so parent is current. P, and then C will be the 20. Okay, we finished that while loop. So I create a reference variable called replacement node and set it to current. Okay? Rn also references the 20. Replacement node, set your left to to removes. Wait, which one's to remove? That's this one. To remove, that was the parameter for the function or the method that didn't change. To remove, that's the node we want to remove. We're removing the 19. To remove is 19. Right? So, okay, replacement node is current. Replacement node, set left to to removes, get left. So, replacement node, your left is to removes left. So that's this node's left subtree. Okay, right. We want to move the 20 here, and the 20's left subtree should be the node I want to remove's left subtree. Right? Cool. That should be pretty good. Then what do we have here? What does this comment say? Update replacement nodes right if necessary. If the in-order successor of I don't know if it's getting cut off. Yeah. The other successor of to remove is its immediate right. No update is needed. Otherwise, replacement node's parent's left is set to the replacement node's right, and the replacement node's right is set to the to remove's right. Huh. What does that mean? Okay. So first, up the replacement node. If the inner successor happens to be to removes immediate right, that would be like saying, I want to remove 19. It's possible that 19's right is the smallest element in its subtree. Meaning, that, like, if the 20 didn't exist, if I want to remove this, or to removes this is the element I want to remove. I don't need to update 21's right subtree. 21, if 21 was going here, 21's left subtree would be two removes left subtree still. That's got to be set. But 
Because it has no left subtree that might get obliterated in updating it, all I need to do, like, I don't need to update its right subtree. It's already, it's there. I'm happy. But if I draw, we're running out of space here. If I draw the 20 back, and let's say there's like a, a 22. No, that can't work. A 20.5, okay? Because it's possible that the node I want to replace it with here has a right subtree. It could be not. But that's what this is addressing here. It's, if this is the smallest element, it must not have a left subtree. So I can replace I can make this left subtree be the node I want to remove left subtree. There's no issue there. But it's possible that the node I want to replace it with already has a right subtree. So I can't just say, hey, uh, 20, your right subtree is now the node I want to remove's right subtree because what happens to the poor 20.5? So what do we do? Okay, so if two removed uh, get right is not equal to the replacement node. Okay, so that's the case of the root of the subtree. Parents set left. So in this case, parents is the 21. Set your left to the replacement node's right. Oh, this is just all. What is this doing? What is this effectively doing that we just looked at? This is just removing the minimum node. Set the parent of the minimum node's left to the minimum node's right child. It could be null. If it's not, if it is, it doesn't matter. You just set the parent of the minimum node left to be the right child of the minimum node. That's all that's doing. So here, remember, 20.5 must be less than 21. So the whole rejigging here is this becomes a 20. The 20's left is set to 19's left. We already covered that. It's not the immediate one. So it's not 21 that's being replaced. So we are saying 21, your left subtree is the node, the replacement node's right subtree which that's just removing the minimum node from a tree. That's the algorithm that we've already looked at. Go all the way to the left and replace it with its right subtree, which could be null. So 21's left becomes that, and then 20's right becomes the two removes right. And that's what the code should say. Replacement node's right is two removes right. Yep, boom. There we go. <laughs> I say it as if like trivial, right? Look, I know it's not. But once you take your time and work through this, it will be. But right now, the first time you see it, I'm not expecting you to understand it fully. That's ridiculous. But once you take your time to understand it, you will see that, yeah, it is actually quite nice and intuitive and clean. And as we, and isn't it also kind of interesting that like when we start writing more complex algorithms, we're at the point, maybe it wasn't obvious to you when we were doing it, hopefully it was more obvious when I pointed it out about what we were just doing right here, but as we're writing more complex algorithms, you will see parts of the more complex algorithms be straight up algorithms you've already used. This, like you're just getting more experienced with coding, more experienced with working with these algorithms that, yeah, you start to see like algorithms re-arise in solving bigger ones. It wasn't a method call in this particular example, which maybe it could have been, I don't know, but, right? This was, oh, find the in-order successor, find the minimum node, find the in-order successor, that's just find the minimum node. We know how to do that, we literally just wrote that code. How do you remove the minimum node? Oh, you remove it, by replacing it with its right subtree. That's all that did. We already saw that. 
<clears throat> and then at the end, we remove, we return the replacement node. Obviously, this method has a side effect. Sure, it's returning the replacement node, but it's also messing up with the structure. It's, it's affecting the structure of this tree. So be aware of that. Cool. Any questions about any of that? If you understood it clearly, fantastic. If you understood it enough that you could follow along, but maybe you need to look later, look later. If you didn't understand it at all, look later or harder. Because this is important stuff. I had someone bring up in lab that the trees finally had them like reinterested. I don't know, who here would kind of like, when we got to trees, you're like, oh, okay, this is different, this is new. Because when we were doing stacks, queues, and bags, you're like, okay, yeah, it's just more of the same shit, just a little different. Obviously, this is just a generalization of like the bags. But as soon as you start having the nonlinear data strip, like you can see, like, okay, yeah, I can see where the complexity is coming from. I can see the usefulness of it. But the complexity arises, and with the complexity comes more interesting problems to solve, and you always feel better when you solve more complex problems, right? So, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the trees. I certainly do. It's a lot more fun than bags. And then all of this is just working through what we just did. Okay, contains, well, contains is actually a nice clean algorithm. Just contains just calls a binary search calls binary search for the element. If you ever get to current being null, return null. So binary search returns a reference to the node you want to find. So when you call contains, it just checks if this returns null or not. Uh, count, this is just a binary search, but instead of just returning the node, if you find it, return one plus whatever the count is on the right subtree. Otherwise, keep looking down the corresponding subtree. Who can tell me why it's always one plus count down the right subtree? How come I didn't do a search left or right or anything? Who can tell me why I just go one plus count of the right subtree? It's, an, it's not a trick question. Is it because we assume balance? Nope. It's not because we assume balance. No. No, no. It's a much simpler answer. Where did duplicates go? On the right. So if I'm looking at something, and I'm like, yep, OK, I found it. There might be more. If there was, and all the duplicate values went to the right, eh, we got to keep looking down the right subtree. Never look down the left subtree if you found the thing you're looking for, because always duplicate elements went to the right. That's all that is. There we go. Obviously, this is not the extent of the linked binary search tree implementation. These are just like the noteworthy things I thought were worth covering. But yeah, there we go. Yes? On the final? Uh, I reserve the right to tell you to do it however I want you to do it. But it won't matter to you because you'll be experts by then because you're going to study and prepare because you're good students, right? All right, to give you a sense of the rest of the course, well, sorting is the, what we're going to cover for the remainder of the course. Um, I know we talked a little bit about sorting at the end of 161, but we never really went into detail of these algorithms. We kind of talked about some of like the simpler sorting. Um, bubble, selection, and insertion we covered. But we didn't go into any details. We didn't talk about algorithm analysis or anything. Um, we didn't talk about like correctness. So the next topic is going to be uh, some of those same simple sorting. But then the sorting recursively, which is actually not a great title because some of the sorts in there are not recursive, but whatever. Um, that's where we're going to see some actual, like, really clever sorting algorithms, but we'll cover those later.
Anyways, that's it for today. Any last questions? Okie dokie.